Hello friends, today we're going to be talking about John Constable. John Constable was born June 11th, 1776. That was about a month before the Declaration of Independence was signed July 4th, 1776. John Constable was born in Burkholt, Suffolk, England. While John Constable was growing up, he displayed artistic talent and aptitude. And so when he got to be old enough, he went to the Royal Academy Schools in London where he received artistic training and guidance and became an amazing artist. John Constable became one of the most well-known and well-loved landscape artists of the Romantic period. Let me tell you about Romanticism. Romanticism or the Romantic movement or Romantic era was an artistic and intellectual movement that got huge in Europe in the early 1800s. Romanticism was characterized by its emphasis in emotion, individualism, and glorifying the past or nature. So John Constable loved to paint landscapes, especially areas where he grew up in the English countryside. But one of the differences between John Constable and his contemporaries, a contemporary is someone who basically does the same thing at the same time. Other artists in John's time really romanticized their paintings. So they would look out at nature and they would say, if they were looking at a tree or a mountain, they would say, okay, I think the color would be better like this. And they would make it even more beautiful or more stunning than what they could actually see in real life. John also did that. His paintings also kept things in that wouldn't necessarily be romantic at the time. A cart stuck in the river or people working or things like that, that weren't necessarily made to be more beautiful than they really were in the natural world, he thought were important in his paintings. So romantic artists like to make things even more beautiful or more exciting or more idealized than they really appeared in real life. John liked to paint things as he observed them. So if there was a thundercloud, he would paint a thundercloud. If there was paint peeling on a house, he would paint the house with paint peeling. In 1816, John painted the Hay Wayne. The Hay Wayne was in a beautiful little village and it was a granary, a grain mill. And this painting earned him significant success and acclaim. People started really paying attention to his work after this painting. There's the mill in the background and the beautiful clouds and the cart that was stuck in the water. And people looked at this and just thought, this is incredible. One of the things that John Constable really loved and you can tell in his artwork, he really studied how clouds behaved and acted in nature. And so he would draw beautiful, intricate skies. Just like every other artist, John Constable had problems. He had financial problems. He struggled with getting people to see his work. Just like everyone, everyone has struggles and it's how they overcome them, how they face their struggles that really makes a difference to people. Later on in life, John Constable was able to show his work in England and abroad, other places in Europe and around the world. Towards the end of his career, John Constable became a full member of the Royal Academy, which was a big deal. John Constable passed away March 31st, 1837 and left behind a considerable legacy. People are still influenced by his landscape paintings today. Art inspiration of the day. John Constable said, the world is wide, no two days are alike, nor even two hours. Neither were there ever two leaves of a tree alike since the creation of the world, and the genuine productions of art, like those of nature, are all distinct from each other. Painting is but another word for feeling. The sky is a source of light in nature and governs everything. The landscape painter must walk in the fields with a humble mind. No arrogant man was ever permitted to see nature in all her beauty. I never saw an ugly thing in my life, for let the form of an object be what it may, Light, shade, and perspective will always make it beautiful. Okay, so this is what I would like you to do. You're going to get watercolor paper, tape, and watercolors. Now, I'm going to show you some pictures. You're going to choose one of these three views of the Hay Wayne. You'll pause the video and then paint it. And I'll explain why they're in black and white in just a minute. First, second, and third. Okay, I hope that was good enough. So just pause and go back when you need to look at those again. So these are all the same location. 
the same place. This is where John Constable went and painted the Hay Wayne, the, dar the cute little village in Suffolk. So here's one that's kind of the middle view. There's the mill in the back and you see the sky and a reflection of the light here at the bottom with a reflection of the mill and trees and things like that. This one, you can barely see it, but over here is the chimney and the side of that mill. And then it's just a picture of the trees and the lake. This last one is a wide view, so you see even more of it. So the mill, more cloud features, just a little bit. So you choose which one you would like to paint. The value is probably the most important thing that an artist can really master. That is the range from lightest to darkest. So from your whitest white to your darkest dark. You look at a picture and you find the darkest area first. So maybe in here, right, right next to the mill here, some over here maybe. So you find your darkest dark and then you find your lightest light. Some people think it's this building, but it's really the sky and maybe this little spot, this highlight in the water. Everything else will fit within that range from one to 10. One being your lightest, 10 being your darkest. It doesn't really matter what colors you use. You could use greens and blues, but as long as you have your darkest blue here or your lightest green there, but if it's the right value, then it will, it will look good even if it's weird colors. So I set out those colors for my kids. I also said if you want, because we did this outside, you could also paint the area around instead of pick one of these. So a couple of my kids painted the area and the other ones painted the hay wing. When you have your paper, you tape around the edges and I'll show you mine taped and then I'll take it off for you. So tape around the edges so it sticks to the table. And then if it dries that way, it'll dry a little flatter because when water comes in contact with the paper, it tries to shrink up. But if you have it taped down, it stays flat a little better. Also, when you put it behind glass, like in a picture frame, it'll also help to hold it flat. You tape it to the table first and pro tip, instead of just take the masking tape right off the tape or right off the roll, and sticking it on, you take off the piece and then put it on your clothes a little bit, the sticky part, so that it's not super sticky and then tape around the edges and it kind of will create this frame, which is pretty cool, it's nice. So let me show you what they did. So the first one that I'm gonna show you is my youngest. He didn't love the idea of, of painting a landscape and so he, at, he did some grass and actually I think it's really beautiful. It's very simple, but it turned out beautiful. Next, this one did a light blue sky and then some mountains in the background. And then here are some lighter grasses and shrubs. I, love, I just love the color combination. Everything worked together so well because some of these things were mixed together. He mixed, used the blue and the yellow to mix this green. And so it all works together because it's the same blues and yellows. Next, this one was of the Hay Wayne. Here's some things that I really loved. In the background, because trees are not a solid mass, you can see sunlight through the little pieces. And so this one decided to do, he took his paintbrush and did dots and then did dots closer together and kind of colored it in a little bit so that you could see the sun peeking through, peeking through the individual pieces. And so he tried to get the dark in here and he got the water and he made really neat little little plant pieces. It's beautiful. This next one decided to do what he could see. So there, again, there was sky and some mountains in the distance. It's fall time. So there, so some of the shrubs and the bushes around have gone more brown and actually it's gorgeous. Different colors at different times of the year and you can find beauty anywhere. Even if the, the leaves have fallen off, there's a different beauty in the fall and winter than there is in the spring and summer. So just look for the beauty around you. And this last one was also of the Hay Wayne. I love that it is so soft. It feels like there is light coming out and you can see all the little teeny intricate details of a tree in the background and to the side here. They are absolutely beautiful, soft and delicate. Okay, and here is mine. So I taped around the edges and so I'm gonna take off the tape. You have to be so careful because it will, it will start to tear off a little bit of the edge, just like it's doing right now. I need to be more careful. It's actually pretty satisfying to take it off and just see your beautiful frame, but mine is tearing pretty badly. I didn't put the tape on my clothes as well and so it stuck a lot. So you can see, that 
it has started to peel off a little bit. But here we go. So we have the hay wane and we have some reflection in the water. I feel like the values are pretty close. There are other there are areas that could be better. But up in the sky, there's some light hopefully coming through the trees in the background. Our element of the day. Today we're going to talk about value. Value is so important to artists. If you don't have your lights and your dark set and put in there your darkest dark and your lightest light and then fill in all the rest of the values, your painting can look bland because it doesn't have enough contrast. Many times an artist will use a gray scale. So the 10 would be black and the one would be bright white. You would use your scale, you hold it up and you say, okay, the sky right now is a one and you would, so you would paint, make sure that your sky is a one value, super bright. That tree back there, that shadow is my 10. And so you put that in there so that you know everything in between is gonna be you know, a five or a four or an eight. So when you are painting, make sure you have your values correct. Thank you so much for coming to Homeschool Art, learning about John Constable, one of the great romantic landscape painters of the late 18th century. Please like and ding that bell if you want to receive notifications of future videos. Bye.